Welcome to another episode of James Explains. In this video, we're taking a look at one of Matt Parker's maths puzzles, particularly the marching band puzzle. As an introduction, we are shown that a marching band of six people can be arranged as one by six, two by three, three by two, and six by one. By taking a look at just the number of rows of each arrangement, we can see there are either one, two, three, or six rows, which are all of the factors of six. Therefore, the number of arrangements possible with any given number is the same as the number of factors for that number. So the puzzle really is just to find the lowest number with 64 factors. One approach to this is by calculating the number of factors for each number incrementally, but this can be quite a slow approach especially when we don't know how long it will take to find the matching answer. So what other approaches are there? If instead we look at the lowest number that gives us each incremental amount of factors, we can try to look for patterns to see if we can extrapolate this to 64 factors. It's immediately obvious from these first 11 values that some numbers stand out as quite higher than the rest. If we include a few others that aren't as obviously higher, we can see that it is the prime numbers that stand out. We can also see that all of the values that result in these numbers are powers of two. The first pattern we've found is that if the target is a prime number, the lowest value with that many factors is two to the power of the prime number minus one. Now to try and find a pattern for the rest of the numbers. Once the prime numbers have been taken out, I felt sure there would be an obvious pattern. Especially below this point, all numbers are multiples of 12. However, from looking at the values, it appears that some numbers still stand out as higher than those around them. What's notable though, is that these are both double a prime number. At this point, I gave up on trying to find a pattern myself, and looked to see if there was already one that describes it. The online encyclopedia of integer sequences was as reliable as ever with a sequence of the smallest numbers with exactly n divisors. From reading the formula that describes the pattern, it was obvious that I was not going to find a simple solution just looking through the values myself. However, there was a formula for any prime number to the kth power. As 64 can be expressed as 2 to the 6th power, this is able to give us the value for 64. This states that the value will be the product of the first k Fermi Dirac primes. So multiplying the first six of these values gives us the answer 7560. So there's our answer for 64 if we are only using two dimensions. But what happens if we wanted to find the solution in three dimensions, or even four dimensions? Let's start with three dimensions, where the target number n can be described as the product of three values. In the first case, we will look at what happens when all three numbers are unique. If this is the case, we can arrange the values in six different ways to get the same result. In the next case, we will look at two of the values being the same and the other different. In this case, the values can be arranged in three different ways. Because so far we have had arrangements that can be set in three or six different ways, we can say that the target count must be equally divisible by 3 in these cases. As 64 is not divisible by 3, we know that these cases would not be possible. The remaining case is that the target number can be expressed as a cube of a single number. In this case, there would only be a single arrangement with this value because of three-way symmetry. Therefore, with the target number being a cube, the target count mod 3 would be equal to 1. As 64 mod 3 is equal to 1, we can say that if this is possible, the target number must be a cube number. So let's look at the case where the target number is the cube of a prime. In this case, the possible arrangements are n by n by n, 1 by n by n squared, and 1 by 1 by n cubed. As we discussed before, based on the number of unique sides, these can be arranged 1, 6, and 3 ways respectively, giving a total of 10 different arrangements. In the next case, we will say that n is the product of two numbers. 
This gives us the arrangements AB times AB times AB, 1 times A squared B squared times AB, A times AB squared times AB, 1 times 1 times A cubed B cubed, A times A times AB cubed, B times B times A cubed B, A times B times A squared B squared. These can be arranged 1, 6, 6, 3, 3, 3 and 6 times respectively, giving us a total of 28 arrangements. If we expand this case to say it could also be expressed as the product of two different values, we would again have another 28 arrangements of these two values. However, the first arrangement of each would be the same as a times b is equal to c times d, so this gives us a total of 55 combinations. The next case up would be if the target number could be expressed as a product of three numbers, and in this case we would have a total of 91 combinations available. Beyond this, we would get even more combinations. So we can say that in three dimensions, it is not possible to have a target number that can be arranged in exactly 64 combinations. So let's look at the fourth dimension. Well in this case, when our target number is 30, we have 64 arrangements, so that was easy. If we look at higher dimensions, just like in our third dimension, we could only get target counts of certain values. We can only get 5th dimension target counts of 4, 24, 74, 124 and so on. In the 6th dimension, we can only get 4, 19, 34, 124 and so on. And in the 7th dimension, we can only get 6, 48, 195 and so on. At higher dimensions, it is possible again to have 64 combinations, such as the 64th dimension where the target number could be expressed as a times b to the 63rd power. But there may be other cases too. So, if we're looking for the lowest possible number of people in a marching band, which can be arranged into exactly 64 unique arrangements, in two dimensions it would be 7560, and in four dimensions it would only take 30 people, and that's a marching band I would pay to see. If you want to see the original puzzle, or any others like it, visit thinkmaths.co.uk slash mathspuzzles. And as always, thanks for watching.